Yo, what is going on everybody? Dan Tramty here and welcome back to my tutorial series, Browser Noise. This is tutorial number 13. And for this video, originally I was imagining myself expanding the drum machine and part of me still kind of wants to do that. But the problem is, is it would be just me going through and copying and pasting, you know, instruments over and over again so I can expand the amount of instruments and going through concepts that I've already covered. So, and to be honest, this is starting to feel like a project where I'm just stepping through the idiosyncrasies of the P5 sound library, which is fine, but I want it to be more about me talking about the digital audio concepts and I'll let you use that knowledge to expand your own drum machine. So let's go. All right, say we want to add a snare drum to our drum machine. We can, of course, design one in a DAW like Reason and then bounce it and then take that file and include it in our project. But let's instead try to synthesize a crude snare drum. And by crude, I just mean we're not trying to make a physical model of the snare drum. We're just trying to think about what the snare drum sounds like and kind of recreating it using what we know. All right, I've started a fresh sketch and I, I'm hoping that this code looks kind of familiar, right? Tutorial number one, we built a noise generator. We named it Mr. Noisy and really this is the same exact thing except with a different name, Snare Noise. And when I hit run, it makes noise. When I hit stop, it stops. So we have noise, which is great because snare drums are noisy and we want that. But snare drums don't just sustain indefinitely. They go, it, it has a shape to it, right? In fact, by default, our snare drums shouldn't make any noise at all. We want them to be silent until, you know, like beat two or four or whatever, at which point we want them to go, So if you think about it, we want a thing that modifies the amplitude of the noise in real time. By default, that thing should be a zero so that all of the samples in the noise generator are multiplied by zero, making it silent. We want to make it so that when we trigger this thing, the zero quickly ramps up through a sequence of non-zero values so it creates that amplitude shape. It spikes up to a one, then maybe some intermediate values, then back to zero, if that makes sense. And the thing that I'm talking about has a name. It's called the envelope. Let's look at a recently built envelope example by Chan Jun Chern, who's been doing a ton of work on the P5 sound library this summer. What he essentially did was he created a visualization to show what it would look like were you to input the envelope parameters using these sliders. So if we were to increase the amount of time that it takes for the audio amplitude to ramp from zero to the attack level, then it would have a smooth attack. So I'm gonna click on the canvas to make it sound. There you go, a nice smooth attack. And if I had a short attack time, it would be a, a much punchier attack. So as you can see, it jumps up and then it decays to a sort of nominal sustain ratio and then drops off. It, there's an amount of time you can adjust uh, till it decays to nothing. Um, typically the release level is gonna be at a zero, but of course you can have a different, you know, a non-zero there and you can adjust all of these parameters. In fact, let's try to make something that would sound kind of like a snare drum where we did input some noise. So something like this, I guess. Make it really sharp because, yeah. And then we can actually go ahead and make this a noise object. And I think all I'll have to do is get rid of the frequency, reload it. Oh, yeah, I guess I have to reset these. So give me a second. Sustain, yeah, we don't want any sustain pretty much. Yeah. Now, it's not a great sounding snare drum, but uh, that's the sort of thing we're after in creating this crude snare drum. 
All right, let's get back to the sketch. I'm going to delete all of this slider business and we're just going to have our noise generator. Now, to add an envelope to our noise generator, we're going to declare a variable called env and go ahead in our setup function and set that equal to a new p5.env. And I believe this is eventually going to be changed to envelope. There was some discussion on the GitHub about that. So uh, if, if this is not working, try envelope if you're coding in the future, which I guess you all are going to be doing that. So real quick, I just want to jump to the envelope reference page to show that there's a nice little example here. But more importantly, to show that there are two primary ways of setting the parameters of an envelope. So for example, you can use a combination of the set ADSR and set range. So by set ADSR, it's just sort of a simplified method to set the, I guess, four most important parameters of the envelope. You can set the attack time, the decay time, the sustain ratio, and the release time. Needless to say, it's really important to note that one of these is a measurement of ratio, I guess you could say, and the other three, the A and the D and the R, are measurements of time. Then you could call the set range method to set the range between the uh, loud, loudest moment, which is going to be your attack, and your release level, which is likely going to be zero. And then your sustain from your ADSR is going to be a percentage from zero and the whatever level attack level you set here. So the combination of set ADSR and set range is one way to set all of the parameters of your envelope. Another way is to use just the method set, okay? And that is going to allow you to set a bunch of parameters all in one line, the attack time, attack level, decay time, decay level, et cetera, et cetera. And that's what Chan Jun Shern did, and that's what we're going to do, so let's get to it. Back to the sketch, let's call on dot set, and then we are going to set our parameters. The first one is attack time, which we'll set to very small number in seconds, and then attack level, decay time, decay level, decay or release time, release level, something like that. Then all we have to do is instead of setting snare noise dot amp to a constant like this, we're going to set it to our envelope and we'll want to put that down here so that it's defined before it gets called. And now when we run the patch, we should hear nothing, which is promising, which means we've correctly attached our envelope to our snare amplitude. Now to get this thing to actually trigger, there's a few ways to do it, but we're going to call on dot play. The first argument is going to be snare noise or our um, sound object, I guess. The second argument is going to be a scheduled delay time. So if I put a zero here, the moment this line of code gets invoked, then it's going to trigger and we'll hear a sound, but We'll put a two here to demonstrate that there that you'll get a delay. And then you can put a zero here or whatever you want here for our sustain time. Now, when I hit the run button, it's going to immediately run this line of code and there's going to be two seconds of delay between you hear me saying click and when you hear a very short click. So I'm gonna say click right okay we know it works and now i just want to very quickly as fast as i can create a sequencer like we did with the drum machine so we're going to have a snare pattern which is going to be an array drums which is going to be a part we'll um, assign our array right here um and that'll be something like one zero 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 one zero one zero something like that cool and then we want to create our drums part so drums equals new p5 dot part and in here no drums dot add phrase inside here is where all the magic's going to happen we need a name something like snare drum a callback function like so 
And then the array that we're pointing to, and we're going to pass in time as our property. And here, we're just going to simply copy and paste our envelope dot play, get rid of that semicolon. And instead of a two here, right, this two is the delay time, but we're going to pass in time. That's going to make sure our envelope is played or triggered on a sample accurate clock. And we're just going to call drums dot loop and press play. I will be the first to admit that this snare drum does not sound like a particularly great snare drum, so don't hate on it. Um, we have the beginnings of one, okay? If we add maybe a little bit of filtering or reverb or some other effects, then maybe we'll get a little bit closer. Not quite too sounding exactly like a snare drum, but closer. That's what we're going to do in the next tutorial. I'll see you then later.